All right. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Today, we're talking about listing um, marketing strategies. We wanted to bring this back up because it's pretty apparent right now. Things are changing in the marketplace. And um, it's my opinion that you should have a consistent marketing strategy no matter what the market is. But um, I feel like a lot of agents kind of maybe got a little complacent, not needing to have have to do as much over the past two or three years because you know the market's been so good there's been so much de demand that you don't have to put as much effort into marketing the property and the property is going to sell but with things changing um you know we got to take a look at these things get back in a groove of really being heavy on the marketing side and being thoughtful about this kind of stuff and putting a good listing plan of action in place you know, to get your seller's property sold. So I have a few points that I written down here, um, wrote down here, and I uh, want to go over these and then we can go into each one in more detail. So starting at the top here, I have professional photos and staging. Obviously, this goes a long way. A professional photographer can showcase your property far better than you know you ever could do yourself with um, your own cell phone or your own digital camera. So to me, it, they're worth their weight in gold in hiring a good photographer to go in there and capture the prog property. It's also helpful to be on those appointments and help move any clutter or anything that needs to be slid around during that photo shoot okay. to make the property look a bit more attractive um, when those photos are being taken. The next point I have written down is price your home competitively. This is straight out of Mike Ferry's playbook, but um, obviously it's important now. Um, markets, again, changing. We can't just take whatever you know the seller wants to price their home at put it on the the multi list and expect it to sell properties that are listed high are going to be sitting on the market and subject to price reductions going forward so it's better to price the home competitively get it sold quickly and with better terms um i have third here market the home in the multi list but that's a couple different details I also wrote down. Make sure the listing details are accurate. Definitely double check, triple check all the input that you have in the MLS and make sure it's accurate. Double check the tax records, um, square footage, uh, acreage, those sort of details. Uh, write a well thought out description. Um, use your resources, look at other listings that are similar. Uh, highlight the features and attributes of the property. And if you need some help with creativity, take those features and attributes and put them in chat GPT and then proofread what that wrote. And it's gonna give you a help. Next, I have arranged the property photos in the MLS into a order that makes sense. Don't uh, you know? put the, the key features like kitchens and bathrooms all the way at the end. You want people looking at those first and engaged in the photos in the MLS. So definitely organize them in a uh, appropriate manner. Next, I put mail a postcard around a radius um, of your listing. Kong does this, you know, he puts together a postcard that he even brings on his listing appointments. And maybe we can get into that here later when we go back through these points. The next point I have written down is you need to get the listing in front of the top 10% of the agents in the multi-list. We all know that the top 10% of the agents do 90% of the business. So if you're not getting that listing out to those people, it's somewhat of a disservice to your seller. So whether it's an email campaign or you have those people in a database that you um, prospect and um, give them a call once you list the property and let them know it's active. The last point I have written down here is a social media marketing campaign. Whether you're using KV Core and you're posting that listing and then you're you're putting it in um, different classified pages or you know realtor forums, 
that needs to be included in your marketing efforts. So with all that being said, we'll go back up to point number one. Uncle Tim, do you want to give us your thoughts on, you know, professional photos and staging? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's important considering the fact that we have the ability to adjust our brokerage fee based on um, whatever we want to charge to at least have professional photos done. Um, you, you know, I know for a while you could have used your own cell phone. You could have just put a picture of the front on the mark on the uh, MLS, and somebody would have bought it. But those times are changing. The market is slowing down. If you haven't noticed the last two or three weeks, it's starting to slow down. The days on the market starting to increase. And I think it's very important to let a professional do your pictures for you. And like you said, we got to have them in a certain order too. The idea of marketing is to tease the individual to want them to want to look at your house. To want to, li to look at your listing, to tease them, not to give them 200 photos that they're scrolling through 50 of them before they get to the kitchen. People get tired of that. You know, my brother-in-law, Kathy will probably hate this. Randy always says sometimes less is better. And, you know, honest to God, 15 to 25 photos sometimes is enough. It's more than enough to tease them, to want them to look at your, your, uh, your listing. So I really do think that as a professional, if you use the good photos done by a professional, that when you go in on your next listing appointment, you can show them what you're doing. If I was going to compete against an agent that takes their own photos, and I knew through the pre-qualifying script of Mike Ferry to ask, who am I competing against? What other agents are you interviewing? If I knew that that person took their own photos, I'd be pointing that out against them on the interview to get the advantage to show them that I'm I'm a professional and I hire a professional. So that's what my opinion is on point number one. Kong, anything you'd like to add to that? Nope, I completely agree with that last point. Keep it consistent because that's your brand. Yes. Yep. What's the second point, Brooks? Was it uh, the yeah, price? Yeah. Um, second point is price your home competitively. Kong, do you kind of want to get into how you're pricing properties these days? Yeah. I know you always talk, talk to your clients about not chasing the market. So, And Kong, if you could bring up the fact of the townhouse you just listed yesterday and how you got it priced and what the other agent from uh, RSR wanted to price it at and what the comp said and how you got it and what how you explained it. Sure. Um, and again, every listing appointment and every property is different, but uh, I was analyzing the comparisons on this property and uh, it's a townhome community with a lot of different townhomes, two car garages, one car garages, finished basement, unfinished basements, uh, end units, middle units, stuff like that. So in looking at the comparisons, um, yeah, there were some that sold higher, but when you look at where they started off, as far as list price, it was down here, right? So I talked with the client and showed him these comparisons and the ones that were similar to his was priced, uh, I wouldn't say significantly lower, but definitely lower um, than the price that was quoted. So I sat with the, the seller and in building good rapport with him, I said to him, look, the market's going to respond. And if we price it too low, you're still going to get a ton of showings you're going to get multiple offers and the market will bring it back up to where it should be and even more. And in that time frame, it'll also clean up the deals. The inspections may not be as important. Uh, they may let you stay for free, which would really help this particular seller as well. So I just think that 
if you have built enough rapport with your seller, you can, they'll trust you. Okay. They'll, they'll trust you. And that's exactly what this seller said to us was, I trust you. I trust your judgment. Do what you want to do. Okay. So we priced it a little lower and I think we'll get a very good response out of it, but just check the comps a little more carefully than just look at, oh my gosh, it sold for this much. Okay. Go back into the history and see where it started. Cause if the same unit started at three, let's say 335 and they ended up at 360, you may not get that 360 number. Okay. If you put it at 335, you'll get back up to that number. But remember the, the rates or have changed and the market has changed. So um, just go into a little more detail when you go over the comparisons rather than just say, okay, we have comps that sold for this much. Look at the history. Okay. And it's probably more important than ever now. Yep, I agree. And on that particular case yesterday, you listed it for $10,000 less than what the other agent said. Right. And my conversation with the seller was, look, if we had to sell it at this price, can you live with it? And he said, yeah, but I'm going to want this and that. And I said, OK, that's fine. Let's put it there in hopes that we're going to get it back up because we need people to come in and look at this property, not scare mm -hmm. them away. And and our our listing for marketing purposes, because that's what this calls today, is I'm not just saying it, but it's better than the competition in that development because this guy spent a fortune after he paid bought it as a, a spec home from Landmark. He went in and redid all the hardwood floor, put new hardwood floors in, got rid of all the vinyl, and uh, added uh, plantation shutters and all those type of upgrades. So it is going to show beautifully. But one of the things that we wanted to do on a marketing perspective was get a copy of all the invoices of all the money that he put into it and include that in the disclosure statement just to show the foreign appraiser too on how much uh, how much more he put into this property after the sale to justify why we're still above the competition in, in the price we listed it, but less than what the other agent wanted to list it for. So. Brooks, what's the next, or does anybody have any comments on that or want to speak on and pricing at this point? One other thing, some of these companies do offer floor plans as well. And I think that really helps because um, Jim Penny does this. He'll put, let's say if it's a two-story house, he'll put the front photo, then the floor plan of the first floor, then pictures of rooms on the first floor. Then he'll put the second floor floor plan and then pictures of the second floor. So it has a good flow, a good storytelling. Um, also, it helps because if something doesn't work for somebody, they're not gonna waste your seller's time, their agent's time and say, let's go look at this house if the floor plan doesn't work. And these are all things we have to think about right now, because like I said, as the market's changing and shifting, we hadn't had to do that for the last couple of years. You know, some agents got a little lazy because they didn't have to do it. It sold like that. And now we've got to be a little more creative and, and, and get back to a professional marketing plan and make sure we're doing this stuff right. So anybody else want to uh, chime in on the uh, pricing aspect of where we are with this market right now or something that they've recently done with pricing based on the market the way it is so i just had a uh i just had a townhouse in mechanicsburg that um we had a very similar one that was priced at 340 and i told my seller they've been on the market for 30 days and i talked to the agent they don't have much showings uh we got to come in underneath them and it it might lead to us you know selling faster and making more money and uh both houses went under contract the same day uh, both went under contract under asking, but um, we our house was uh, fifteen thousand dollars more than than the other one that was on the market for forty days. Uh, it sold for three hundred. Ours sold for three fifteen. So um, pricing it lower got us got us a better deal. Good, good. 
Anybody else have a, a something that has recently happened to them in the market that they could share with the group? Tim, yeah. So I'm getting a listing out in Lebanon, um, and it's a very unique property. It's a, basically a four car garage, luxury garage finished with um, graded floors, mats, the works. And then above it is 2,200 square foot, basically ranch, um, but it's all above grade. Two bedrooms, two baths, works like the features are to the nines in this thing. It has a 60 inch range, okay? So the seller said, well, what price do you think it should be priced at? And I'm looking at comps and, and you know, you have a gut feeling. So to lock down the listing, I said to him, look, why don't we, why don't you and I split and pay for an appraisal? Because there was a couple of things in it, price, um, we, he didn't know the exact square footage because he said, oh, the tax record feels wrong. Right. So we called up a, an appraiser and we split $400. But during that time, I also got him to sign a listing contract. So it was locked down. Okay. Um, and he, he's going to give me the listing and we got the appraisal back and uh, we decided that we're going to list it just slightly below it. But uh, that's just another technique. Yeah, and, and that is a very unique house. Like you said, lots yes. of garages. But you, did you say that was in Lebanon? I thought that was out in Lower Paris. Jonestown. What's that? Jonestown, Lebanon. Jonestown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lebanon okay. County. So, okay, Kong or Brooks, what's the number three? So number three is put the home in the multi-list and make sure the listing details and everything in there is accurate, a well-written description and arranged property photos in an order that makes sense. We kind of already touched on, on some of those. Are there any other tricks or additional things that people put in the MLS to make, you know, digitally the attract the listing more attractive to buyers and consumers looking on websites um i noticed that agents only fill in required fields just the bare minimum to get it published right so that you can push the publish button um there's a lot of things in there that you can add so your description has more vibrance to it um for example the rooms okay the room measurements the features in each room you can even put in the kitchen if it has gas cooking or electric cooking you know just that little detail um because the more details you have and the more you're showing to your seller that you're detail oriented when you have to go for that price reduction, they'll listen to you. But if you're just doing just the bare minimum, they're going to feel, they, they can sense that. And they're going to say, well, you haven't done enough to get me this price. You know, so you're probably right about the price, but it's just, you got to show the seller something. So price has been, back to price as we're still on it. Price has been a difficult thing the last couple of years because things have sold for astronomical prices. I mean, it's crazy. But there's also those people who got, let's just say, a little greedy and wanted to list them for extremely high prices. And some of those properties are currently sitting on the market and are not selling. We are in the time of the year, especially about three weeks from now, where there will be some people that will say, I want to take my home off the market for the holidays and let's start again in January or February or the spring. Okay. So assuming that you still have the listing and you have control of it, we might want to make sure that number one, if you're going to withdraw it, that it's off the market for at least 60 days. And number two, when you put it back on, do not just put it back on the market. You need to type it in as a new listing. 
So we want the if you want the clock to start ticking on the number of days back to one and not have a cumul cumulative days on the market number, then it needs to be entered in as a new listing. We've had an agent who uh, unfortunately made a little error on that recently and the seller has gotten upset. But there was some extenuating circumstances to it and we fought vigorously with the Board of Realtors and the Multilist and were able to get an adjustment on that because it was off the market for more than 60 days. And the days on market weren't accurate between all the different websites, meaning Realtor.com, Zillow, the MLS, Remax.com, everything was inaccurate. So we were able to win that battle once. I don't know that we'll ever win it twice. So, um, but we, we, we were at least able to make the seller happy. We all know ultimately what sells the property, not the days on the market, it's price. And that's what we're talking about. And as Mike Ferry used to say, we need to get our listings at a price that will cause them to sell. And like Kong said, if you can get them at a lower price that a seller will at least be willing to accept, if that happens, then, then that's great and let them bid it up from there. But I just wanted to talk about those particular listings that are gonna with, wanna withdraw over the holiday period. Make sure you handle it properly. What's the next point, Brooks? Yeah, absolutely. One quick question here for uh, Kong. Do you still use Chat GPT for some of your listing descriptions? Uh, are you using that for like some creativity or just at least stimulating some ideas for your descriptions? I do. But the key is you still have to read through it because sometimes it's not accurate, right? Um, sure. Yes, I do. And it gives you a very good description. Um better than what I can ever write. So, yes. Awesome. Yeah. You know, if anybody is interested, I can I can share a chat GPT prompt that uh, it asks you questions before it writes the description. Um, and you can also scan in the tax sheet and it'll pull information off the tax sheet or an old MLS listing. And then it'll ask you questions of how you want to write it and what you want it to sound like. So if anybody's interested, Chat GPT is not just like type it in and like it gives you what you want. You can have it quiz you so you get exactly what you want. Keith, do you think we could uh, demonstrate that on a future call if we share screens with you? Sure. Yeah, I, I got one going right now. It's amazing. It's five different chat bots uh, with five different uh, outlooks on uh, this this business that I, I think I want to start or it's an app. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, if you just scratch the surface with chat GPT, it's cool, but we could, we could do a deep dive and get into some really crazy stuff. Um, you can even, once you have all that information in, you can even have it write or create personas of the ideal buyer for your house and then make ads directed at those specific personas for buyers. It's kind of crazy. All right, good. Thank you, Kong and or Brooks and Keith. Maybe we can get that set up for you know a call in the next week or two. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we can do a in-person workshop as well and also stream yeah, it, you know, live. Good. Yeah. Um we'll get we that. We can in do an works. in-person workshop and I'll bring hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Right. Go ahead. We have a hot dog hat for you to wear. I know. I'll put that on. <laughs> All right, moving on to uh, the next point here. Um, I have written down this part of our, our personal campaigns is mail a postcard around a radius of the listing that you have. So, you know, depending on what size radius you want to do, you can work with sensations or um, another. <laughs> He's got his hot dog hat on. Look at that. Um, you can work with these companies to quickly send them something uh, KB Core is great with this now. As soon as you put a listing in, it automates listing material for you, whether it's a internet post or a postcard. 
you can simply just take that PDF that they generate from you, send it to Sensations or another send out cards company, and um, they'll put it in effect and mail it out. You don't even have to think about it. So I definitely think that's something that everybody should think about implementing it. Not only it gets exposure for your listing, but it also helps you potentially generate some more leads um, for yourself in selling properties. Uncle Tim, any thoughts you want to add to that? You're talking about the postcard? The, yeah. Uh, uh, is Shelly still on the call here? She was on. She just uh, told me she just sent one, did 100 cards around one of her listings. I know Paul and Sue have done that in the past a good bit. Morgan, do you, have, do you ever do postcards around any of your listings? Has it worked for you in the past or... I haven't done it recently, but it's actually, I just like um, bought some yeah. templates on Etsy to do my own because it's really easy to create a um, mailing list from the MLS. So I created a couple mailing lists too, just a farm, but I also have that set up. So um, I have an estimate in, or I'm getting an estimate right now from get it now print to see like what it's going to cost to send to some, cause they'll send out to your mailing list and all you have to do is send on the mailing list. So they've been really fast to work with. And I know that's where Aaron's ordering the postcards for Santa and everything. So I have an estimate with them because I'm testing it out to see um, what they'll charge. Okay, good. Yeah, back in the realty world days, my dad and I, we used to, it was labeled tell 25, tell 25. So some people send out 50, 100, but the idea was to tell 25 people around your listing or tell 50 around your listing send them out a postcard or a mailing drop off. If you want to walk, a, a, you know, a brochure on, on your listing. And if you can follow it up with a phone call, if you can get the phone numbers to do it, it's just promoting the listing because we know what's the script. When one home sells, normally two more go up for sale right away. When do you plan on moving? So the idea sometimes of the postcards are not necessarily going to sell your listing but it's going to get you the next listing because the people are going to see how hard you're marketing. Yep. Hey, Tam, this is Terry. Yeah, um, sure. I, I, I did my first and only postcard oh, back in probably June, and it was to a, a neighborhood in West Hanover that I'm very familiar with. Um, only had about 50 homes in there, but I did a just sold because I just, at that time, of course, the market was just still crazy. Um, it was a company called Wise Pelican. Um, I think I gave a copy of my postcard to Aaron, but it was so easy. The mailing, I mean, right on the site, I could do a radius, you know, just draw it with my finger of who I wanted to be included. And it was such quick turnaround time. It was awesome. So that's another company to check out online. W-I-S-E, Wise Pelican. Okay, good. We, Aaron, we should send that out again to everybody, especially if you can literally draw around with your finger the and you don't have to be creative with that. You can yeah, pretty they much have very good customer service too. Like they, I create an account and they like follow up with you. And so like, it seems pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. I will actually say I have, I created an account with them as well. Um, haven't tested them out, but that just reminded me too, but that's the company that um, in the Buffini group that I'm in for Popeyes and mailers, they, that's where I would say most of the agents use. Good. That's good information. Thank you. What was, what was that called? Wise Pelican. Pelican. Wise Pelican? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, the next uh, point I have written down here is to get in front of the top 10% of the agents in the multi-list. Um, you know, like I talked about earlier, whether it's putting together a list of those people and you give them a phone call or it's an email distribution list, it's smart to specifically target those agents with listings that you have coming active because likely they're going to have buyers for that listing. Um, Kong, I know you make a, a lot of calls depending on, you know, the type of pro property, you know, certain agents might work in that that um, price range or whatnot area, and you make calls to those agents, right? Yeah, and um, actually the MLS makes it 
easier now too. You can also do the reverse prospecting and see um, agents that have potential clients that the house fits their criteria. So absolutely, you always want to talk to other agents and, and uh, you know, just find out if they have any inventory coming in as well for your buyers. So it's, it's good to network. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, for those who aren't aware, the MLS, you know, with that reverse prospecting does give you a list that anybody they have set up on a search within their, their portal, um, it shows you that they have active buyers looking for that specific property. So it's worth, you know, giving them a call and giving them a heads up. Um, just like that listing you did take yesterday. Um, that particular development, there's been one small real estate company that has literally sold the last five units in that development. And as I've said to you the last several days, to me, it'd be a good idea to call a couple of those agents over there and let them know, because yep. if we let them know quickly, um, we might get an offer from an investor pretty, pretty fast. So um, reaching out, like you're saying, Brooks, to the top agents or whichever agents uh, um, are doing a lot of business in a particular area is a great idea. Yep. <clears throat> And then the last point I have written down here is the social media marketing campaigns. Obvious, obviously, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, but one of the easiest to me is just taking that listing right from KV Core and putting it into whatever social media platform you want. And from there, you can boost it to whoever you would like. And um, it's real simple. And then those leads flow back into your database but um it's definitely something important that provides exposure for your listing and also as a benefit again to you for generating business um any thoughts on that uncle tim anything you want to add yeah I, I would actually i know we did it once before but i'd like to have another call where we include going into kv core through remax.net and showing how easy it is to uh, take one of your listings once you get a listing and uh, to promote that on a social media platform. So um, if you don't mind, I would really like to see that as another call too. Yeah, definitely. I can set that up and we'll go through some of that automated material um, that uh, KB Core generates for you on your behalf. Yep. And, and then I, I, I noticed you guys didn't mention to send out a just listed, just sold uh, email on KV Core to everybody that you got in there. So every time you get a listing, send it out to them, whether it fits them or not, just like your postcards. Sure. So you're talking to your entire database within KV Core, right, Keith? Yeah, KV Core, let them know you listed a house. Yeah, it's a good point. It's another touch to the past clients and centers of influence in your database. And it's pretty simple within KB Core. So we can definitely incorporate that too into um, you know, the workshop that my uncle's talking about. All righty, guys. Well, that's all I had here for today. Um, you know, Uncle Tim, any closing thoughts? Kong, anybody? Aaron has some stuff for us. I know we got the uh Santa is coming back to town here. So I'm sure you want yes. to let everybody to know the details. So I know we mentioned before um, Santa is coming back to town. We're going to do a hot cocoa bar, make ornaments. Um, it was really fun last year. And um, we actually, the postcards are ready. So again, we're going to offer, um, if any agents want postcards to send out to their clients, please let me know. Um, this is an event that, you know, we pay for, we cover. Um, it's a great opportunity to invite your clients to come in. And it was tons of fun. Um, so we're going to do that. That's December 10th. I can send you a template. Also, if you want to, um, I didn't know that you can actually do your own, like if you have Canva, but I can send it to you if you want to put your name on it. But it has a little section on the back that you can handwrite and everything. Um, we can stamp them here if you want. So just let me know. I'll send out an email about that. Also, um, 
I am looking for donations or people to adopt children again. Um, we're usually able to um, help at least 20 different children from different organizations um, and New Hope Ministries, we usually help too. Um, I heard Middlesex Elementary School is not getting a lot of response for help. So I'm waiting to hear back from the counselor there. Um, but we help Perry County join hands. So I don't mind doing the shopping if you just give me your money, you know. Um, but no, it's great. And we just like to help these children who otherwise wouldn't have, you know, a, a, you know, as nice of Christmas. So please reach out. I'll keep emailing and bombarding you um, and let me know what we can do. Um, I think that's it for right now. Aaron, um, thank you. And thank you for putting this uh, together again for the Santa. It was a great uh, event last year. We're, we're, we're hosting this event. All you have to do for those that are on the call and those that will listen to this after the fact on the uh, YouTube channel, all you have to do is invite your a few of your past clients, centers of influence that have children, reach out, give them the opportunity to come get their picture taken with Santa, have some hot cocoa and a cookie. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you'll just get some business from them in the next year for doing something like that. So... Thank you, Brooks, and everybody on this call. Aaron, again, thank you for setting this all up, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.